right, so here we are, episode two of the Phil Connors Society, uh, which, as I mentioned in episode one, is named after Bill Murray's character in Groundhog Day. He is stuck uh, living the same day over and over again, desperately wants to escape from that, eventually comes to a place of acceptance. And with that, he begins to learn new things. He, be, he learns how to play the piano. He learns to ice sculpt. He learns a language. He learns poetry. Uh, and um, it, it's a great message, uh, I think. And, and myself, I started playing guitar, that funny thing in the background, uh, a few years ago. And uh, it's changed my life. It's, it's amazing. And I, I've become a, you know, evangelical, uh, try something new, you know, preaching on the corners. So um, this was my idea was to interview people who I found had started something new and, uh, and see, see why and how. And, and so today we have Lindsay Smale. Hi, Lindsay. Hi. And I've known Lindsay for about 12 years, I think. Um, but for you guys, I'm going to read a, a brief bio so you can get an idea of of what Lindsay does and, and her background, and then we're gonna go into the, the interview. So, so Lindsay Smale has worked as a graphic designer for over 25 years. In 2013, she founded her own design business focused on report design, infographics, and branding. Uh, she studied graphic design at OCAD U, and she also has a master's in English from U of T. Uh, she's a fine poet, I'll say that as well. So anyways, you can see her paintings, because that's what we're talking about today, at lindsaysmaleart.com. lindsaysmaleart.com. So uh, again, welcome, Lindsay. Thanks. And um, because I know you, I have heard through the grapevine that you, you're passionate about painting. Mm -hmm. Something you've become very excited about and busy with. So the first question is... Um, why painting? Was it something you wanted to do for a long time or did it just, how did it come about? It was kind of a weird eureka moment. Um, I had a, last summer was really busy for me with my design business. Usually mm -hmm. I get a bit of downtime in the summer, but it was just project after project and they were hard. And by the end of the summer, I was really kind of discouraged um, just grumpy. And mm -hmm. I had a week off uh, that kind of came out of nowhere and my husband was off on the East Coast. And I wondered what to do with myself for that week. Mm. And uh, it, I just, it came to me, I was like, oh, I'm gonna paint for a week. Mm. And I don't really know where it came from, but um, I don't know, at this point in my life, I'm sort of like, if, when you get the message, you just go with it, you know, right. give it a whirl. And I intended to do it just for a week. Oh, and, okay. Just and, while, he, while your husband was away kind of thing. Yeah, just okay. to recharge, to have something to do, because I knew otherwise I would end up sitting on the couch, you know, mm -hmm. and the week would evaporate, and then I would still be grumpy and uh, back into the whirlwind of work, right? Right. You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, your time evaporates if you're not really engaged. Uh, okay. But then I was really surprised in that um, I became obsessed. Okay, in a good way. Basically. <laughs> <laughs> now, and, now, um, if I can jump in, I, yeah. um, what was your when you got the idea of painting? Was that exciting? Was it a daunting idea? Like, how did you feel about it when you thought, oh, that's the thing I want to do? It was, I thought it was exciting and, you know, just something different. And I really liked uh, that I was going to do something creative uh, without a client. Mm, uh, mm. You know, I do, graphic design is creative, but it's always creative in service of somebody else. Right. And what they need to communicate. It's, you know, it's commercial art, sometimes yes. it's called. Anyway, so I just wanted that freedom and. Mm -hmm. So it made sense. Right. That's interesting because I'm an actor and, you know, I also write. And mm -hmm. so I understand what you're saying that when I write something theatrical, I've got the full freedom of that as opposed to doing a Colgate commercial or something. Yeah. Where you're a hired gun. Right. You know, right. I'm a hired gun for a living kind of thing, you know? Yeah. And so it's nice to decide what the objective is for yourself. And, and um, what was the first, do you know, remember what the first 
piece of, of work that you worked on, the first painting? Uh, the initial stuff I did on paper, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I think I did some sort of swirling vortex okay. uh, kind of thing. I posted it on Instagram. Yeah, I've seen uh, some of your work and it is, I don't know, I don't, forgive me, I don't know the terms in, in visual art, but expressionistic or abstract, it's not, you're not doing no. model, models of trees and people and stuff like that. It's, no, I don't really have a lot of interest in doing representation, you know, depicting mm -hmm. a scene or right. that really doesn't um, float my boat. Some yeah. things end up coming out and they kind of have a landscapey feel. Mm -hmm. uh, some quite directly, right? But it's that's not really. I, I I think I'm getting more abstract as time goes on. Right. Interesting. And when you when you were a kid, did you ever draw or paint and stuff like oh, that? Oh yeah. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Uh, yeah, I've always loved making things. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was always a very uh, it was always very strong academically and. Right. Uh, there was a bit of steering. I, was, I wasn't I said, considered a creative kid. Like I was never right. labeled as a creative kid. That's um, weird that you said steering because I was just picturing you like graphic design is very, you know, it's a, there's a practical, like it's a career. It's a, you know, again, you're doing a commercial as opposed to being an artist, you know, mm -hmm. purely. Well, that was a leap too. I mean, my background was in English lit. And right. I made the leap from editorial to design. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. So. And so how, uh, this is a broad question and a kind of open-ended, but how do you feel when you paint? Do you find that it's therapeutic? Do you find that it's relaxing? What sort of emotionally do you get out of it? If you well, it, to that. it runs the gamut. <laughs> mm. <laughs> uh, you know, when you've got a blank canvas, it's just, it's like play, you know, it's, there's no agenda, you can, you know, throw color on there, and it's very free, and it really is like playing, um, mm. and then something starts to take shape, and the field sort of narrows, and you have to start thinking a little more, or uh, tuning in more, Mm. And there are, it gets hard in the middle, I find, you, the, mm. like, you know, the messy middle of w where it's not clear what it's going to be or what it wants to be yet. Right. Kind of, uh, what am I doing? I don't know. And so that sometimes, mm. that part sometimes doesn't feel super fun. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah. it's interesting. It's very interesting and right. uh, sort of staying open, uh, being being willing to change direction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that, you know, you maybe fall in love with a little part of it. Right. And then you're like, find yourself, you're painting around that part and that's, that's bad. You know, that's, oh, okay. you're yeah, like, yeah. Well, I love this little part. I don't want to mess that up. Get really attached to that. Yeah. You get attached and then you're not free. Right. Um, so that's one of the things I really like about painting is it really, it really invites me to stay in that place of always being open and free and willing to make a risk. I mean, it's mm -hmm. kind of weird to talk about risk with paint, but we always feel mm. like something's at risk, right? You sure. Know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so willing to take a risk um, mm -hmm. and be bold and just, all right, we're doing this, you know. So it, and, yeah, it sounds like when I asked about and you said I, I can run, it runs the gamut. It sounds like you can run the gamut during one painting, not, not. Oh, yeah. Like just during one piece, you can be all over the place kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Now, how, how, how did your, how has your husband responded to your new found obsession? Uh, it's great because he's a man of many obsessions. <laughs> mm, okay. So it, it, it works well. He's a, he's an avid birder and, right. um, yeah, with the pandemic, I mean, he just disappeared off into the woods. Okay. So it was really wonderful that I had something that I was at 
as obsessed as you. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. And, and how about like other friends of your, like how, how have people responded to your work and to your new, um, uh, very supportive. Uh, mm. some of my friends are fans, uh, you know, uh, mm -hmm. very encouraging, supporting me on social media. Yeah. I, I think very, I'm a fan to be honest. Oh, thanks. No, it's, really uh, good. it's good work. Sharing my work and just, you know, it's just nice. Being positive. Yeah. Not to just sort of paint into a vacuum. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Now, do you, um, as far as professional artists in through your whole life, have you had artists that you've admired? Certain paintings that you... Yeah, I've styles? always been, uh, you know, engaged in you know, uh, art to, to some extent. Um, it's mm -hmm. interesting. I've been remembering people who I was enamored with when I was young. I was a huge mm. Tom Thompson fan when I was a kid. Okay. Yeah. Canadian painter who... I did the cryptic crossword in the Globe and Mail today and he was one of the answers. There Anyways, continue. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I was kind of uh, really into him and... Mm. Uh, how he lived his life, you know, he just, he paddled around Algonquin and painted, mm -hmm. and I... Is he the one, sorry, is he the one that went missing? He died, uh, he was missing for a little while, and they found his body. And right, some, yeah, yeah. You know, Semi-mysterious, but drowned. Right, okay. Um, William Blake was a big yeah. one for me when I was a kid, loved Blake. Mm. Um, mm. He did his poetry and the art. Right. Well, maybe that's coming. Sure. Yeah, we got the writing <laughs> there. So what, as you're painting, do you find yourself, like for me with guitar, you know, I thought, oh, I want to learn blues. But then I found out about bluegrass and I was like, oh, this is neat. And then I even tried a few country songs. Do you find that, and I know that we covered sort of the type of or the style of painting you do, but do you mm -hmm. find that because you're painting, you're noticing other paintings or under other artists and going, oh, that's interesting. And Anything corresponding yeah. with? Well, I, when I see something that grabs me, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's in a book or online or wherever, um, I, it, it's really, it's interesting because I just sort of, you know, why? Mm. You know, I ask, you know, what is it about it? You know, do I, is it mm. the color I love? Is it the, you know, the, the way the brush strokes are, is it the subject matter? What is it that is, and I, I keep that stuff and I right. have a little sort of catalog also of photographs that I take and, okay. uh, and if they're really important, I pin them up on my board. I have a sort of an inspiration board and mm. sometimes I don't see it having an influence and then other, and then all of a sudden something just sort of, right pops up and it's like oh <laughs> yeah, yeah that's from okay so it's marinating somewhere in there and then yeah you notice it. yeah I find if I really try to dictate what I want to do it doesn't work right like if I, I'm like I'm gonna paint something inspired by the pond that I love with all the dead trees and yeah yeah I tried doing it and it's just like oh my god it just mm. dies yeah you said earlier there's an open attitude that you have like empty canvas yeah. let's see where it goes kind of thing yeah and I find uh, similar to writing in some ways you it it starts to tell you what it's going to be and mm. you know in the beginning i think i'm in charge and then by the middle it's occurred to me that i'm not running Isn't the that, show wow <laughs> now what 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 is your do you have particular times of the day that you're painting or is it pretty open that way too or do you have a structure so to speak not really i'm trying to i paint about five days a week uh mm -hmm. I like painting first thing in the morning just because mm. then I find I'm more open and less sort of accelerated into, okay, I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to do this. Right. So I, the mornings are, are good that way if I can. Okay. 
And are you, are you prolific? Have you painted a ton of things? I, do you find that you're, you've accumulated a lot of pieces already or? We are running out of wall space. <laughs> um, right. I've, I've been told I need to step up my efforts to sell. Um, ah, okay. Uh, but I've, that's also because I've been telling Tony, he has to, my husband has, that he has to sell his bowls because we're running right. out of put all his wood turning. Okay. Um, I don't are know. Those, I've done are those bit. yours right behind you? Yeah. Those are all yours? Mm hmm Oh, very cool. Okay. Um, yeah, those there are from a series. I did a, an online show in September. Mm-hmm. And the one there, yeah, um, that's uh, I've got a new series of paintings that I'm going to release later this month. Okay, now you've led me into another area um, that we've already just started talking about, which is what are what are some of your goals with this? Do you have like, you know, yeah, <laughs> yeah. um, well, you know, my uh crazy fantasy goal yeah sure <laughs> <laughs> let's go there the crazy yeah. fantasy goal is you know a you know uh is really a crazy fantasy goal of like a big one woman show somewhere uh in a big reputable gallery and then i have a big dance party after and okay that friend, sounds good the dance party is very key mm -hmm. realistic uh, goal is that it would be nice to sell a few paintings. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, art supplies are very expensive. Right. Uh, so it would be nice to have it be a zero sum game where it mm. wasn't going right. to make poor just you know uh, yes. painting. Um, and have you have you sold pieces yet? Have you? Uh, one. Right. Small piece so far. Okay. That's great. That's um, it. Yeah, and I've done a, I've done a couple of little shows, like the online one, and I was in a right. Wednesday show at the Aurelia Museum, and okay. So I've been. It's interesting. I remember in when you told me you wanted to talk about beginner mind, mm -hmm. and um, one of the things I'm really loving about this, and that it's a new thing. Is I've been really, I haven't been shy mm. about doing it. Like I said, from the beginning, I, you know, I shared my work on Instagram and it wasn't because I thought it was so great. Mm -hmm. It's just because, well, this is what I'm doing and here it is. And right. Right. with other things I've done, uh, I'm not as forthcoming, <laughs> uh, yeah. a little Can more I, hung up. Now, do yeah, because beginner's mind, for me, um, with the guitar, the way I would explain it or describe it is the joy of realizing I don't know anything and then the, the, the real reward of, oh, wow, look, that thing I couldn't do, two months later you realize you can do it. Like you're actually a beginner. And, and with that, the ego kind of steps aside. Yeah. And I... I like you, I, I have no, I mean, I get a bit nervous playing guitar in front of people, but it's not like I'm trying to impress anybody, you know, I'm not yeah. the next Stevie Ray Vaughan. So it's, it's, that's fine. And, and I hear that from you that you're, you know, it's not that you're being cocky about it. It's actually that there's a, there's a, Hey, look at this nice thing that I'm doing. It's got a, yeah, there's, it. there's something sort of, uh, innocent, uh, mm. about it or, um, yeah, where it's it it is it the sharing is easy and comes out of the joy of making it. Yeah, yeah. Rather than um, either showing off or other things where it's like I'm supposed to be good at this. Right. You know, like my job. You know, I'm right. I've been doing it for thirty years. I'm supposed to be pretty good at it, and people right. are paying me money, and there's pressure. Mm -hmm and stuff and whereas this is just i love doing it and here it is yeah that's wonderful and i think that's what you know beginner's mind gives us is that that ability to just be connected with what you're doing without all that garbage of 
pressure and all that kind of stuff on top of yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Right? I don't have a ton of skin in the game. <laughs> yeah. And it's, you don't, you know, I'm not a master, you know what I mean? Mm. I'm just thinking the opposite of beginner would be the master and, um, and we're always learning too, you know? Um, I think when you lose beginner's mind completely, you kind of die because there's no, well, once you think you've got it made, you've figured it all out, <laughs> where do you go from there, right? Yeah, it's, you know, uh, and it, and it helps, uh, doing something new, I think helps with the things that aren't so new. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. You know, it's like, oh, right. <laughs> A little reminder of how it used to be or mm. or just a uh being more open when i'm painting helps me be write a poem or play the piano or something where i have a little yeah. more oh i'm losing i just lost your audio there for a second Oh, am I back? Oh, you're back. Yeah. Sorry. What did you, can you repeat the last thing you said? Yeah. Um, I, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, being more open. Uh, I can't remember what I was going to say. Sorry. That's what? okay. That's okay. Um, I, I, um, well, we were talking about beginner's mind and I, you were talking about how you can take that attitude into playing piano or other things, right? You can sort of yeah. transfer that, that nice attitude to other things. And you probably notice the ego popping up in these other areas, right? Oh, for Maybe. sure. Yeah. But it, you know, there's that sort of reminder that it can be to, to be more into the process itself mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah less worried about the end result for sure for sure yeah the doing the doing of it is you know if if one morning i could wake up and play guitar after an hour of trying it what would be the joy in that right it's like yeah we, we always want things to be over with like i know you know as opposed to the being in it mm -hmm. not to be cl cliche but in the moment Right. Oh, for sure. I mean, that's, it's always like, isn't, it's going to be so great when I finish this series of paintings and mm -hmm. it was pretty great. <laughs> yeah. For, uh, you Not know, bad. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, making them was way better. That's the real joy. Yeah. And that's the interesting place to be. Too, and being stuck think. is fun in retrospect. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But right. I mean, you can't have that moment of, oh, oh my God, that's it. That's what to do. That that's right. finished it without being stuck first. Sure. Yeah. Otherwise, as you say, if it was easy, then. Yeah. Yeah. It makes it more interesting. So right? Yeah. Now we've only got a few minutes left. I, okay. we, we've mentioned your paintings that are behind you. Um, do you want to show us one a little closer up that we can get a look at? Any that you're. Uh, sure. Just to get a, see all your tools in the background too. Yeah. Well, one of the trade. advantages of the pandemic was my husband was home. So I got him to build me a studio. Hey, that's what husbands do. <laughs> um, He's quite handy. Yeah. Now so, if, yeah, hmm. just, there you go. There you go. That's beautiful. Yeah, sincerely, I know we're friends and everything, but you have a lot of talent. And I, I yeah, you do. Well, it's, it's new. Painting is new to me. But of course, as a designer, I mean, I've got a background in color and sure. composition. And yeah, that's another thing. It's kind of nice to connect things, right. right? Like, and if you learn how to do one thing, Mm -hmm. to some extent or whatever it helps you learn how to do something else yeah you learn how to learn right um yeah that's a good point that's interesting you know the skill of learning or you learn that you Maybe. can learn or i you know i don't know how yeah exactly but yeah sort of become emboldened <laughs> right yeah now do you know any people that are close to you that are that are you know, professional or, or have been painting for years? Have you talked to anyone like that? 
mm -hmm. about it? Yeah, I, um, I was going to a drop-in that a local artist was having on Friday mornings, which of course mm. hasn't been happening since March. Right. Right. I was doing that and she and I would go to galleries and openings and things. Mm. Uh, but I have an online community. Oh, great. That I'm part of, of uh, artists in different stages of careers and things. Mm. So people in Australia and the UK and it's, wow. so it's, it's, yeah, I got stuck into a community and yeah, uh, it's great. Yeah. Really helpful we support each other and share how to do yeah. things and critique each other's work and yeah and you just really found great. that like by just sort of searching around or did it just pop up or well i took a course uh i signed up for an online course it's kind of a heavy mm. duty uh 12 week course okay um, and i signed up for that before the pandemic and then the pandemic came along and course you know it's like oh online learning fantastic <laughs> you know fortunately it wasn't Perfect. an in-person thing yeah and uh through that i got hooked up with lots of great people and it was a yeah. fantastic course so cool. um, that really kind of got me rolling have you encountered anyone like yourself who started uh recently or later in mm -hmm. yeah a surprising number of people uh Particularly, uh, you know, women who have, uh, you know, had kids, put their, some of them went to art school, put their art career on hold and have come right. back. Or uh, there are actually like a handful of people in the group who have the exact same trajectory as me, worked as designers wow. and have, uh, are interested in, you know, painting now. Yeah. So, it that makes so that makes so oh, much man. sense to me what mm. that you said that you know that you know to um uh, with acting you know you get you get bit by the bug in such a pure way at a young age and then you get you can get so um you know pessimistic about it for the business side of it right so it's so beautiful to find yeah. artistic expression again without all that business stuff you know um yeah. to me it kind of makes sense that there would be that that need even you know or wish mm -hmm. to do that so um well i just want to i want to thank you Lindsay, for coming on here oh my pleasure thanks and, for asking yeah and i hope you can have your dance party um, <laughs> <laughs> it is a bit of a wild dream you said it was a crazy dream but it may happen you never, uh, know. You never know get your dancing shoes ready so um thank you again and um i will let you know uh when this episode is is ready to air sweet thanks so much Okay, keep on painting. I will. Bye. <laughs> Bye.